If you're watching this video right now, then you should know that this is the third time I've tried to publish this video, and the reason I haven't been able to publish this video is because YouTube has decided that I am not allowed to show body cam footage. Now, according to their rules, I actually am allowed to show body cam footage as long as it's not overly graphic, as long as it's within the context of an educational video, which by the way, this video is in fact educational. I am comparing and contrasting the footage to matters of law to what actually happened in a previous video so it should be no problem however youtube is under the impression and they've had two separate human reviewers decide that this footage where nobody gets wounded there is no blood no one dies the whole point of the footage is to show you how these people escaped from this situation unharmed is violent graphic footage that may be just me trying to revel in the suffering of others. So because of this nonsense, I will be labeling the body cam footage just so that the YouTube human reviewer can know that they're not watching somebody get killed or injured or anything like that, which is obvious from the context of the story. It's obvious because I'm talking about somebody who was victimized that talks about her victimization days later and she's perfectly fine, but whatever, whatever, this is what I gotta do in order to deal with YouTube. So recently on this channel, we featured a story involving a woman called Arabella Foss Yarbrough and her confrontation with Black Lives Matter activists that were supporting a man called Tekle Sunberg, who was shot and killed by the Minneapolis police after Sunberg had the police called on him by Yarbrough because he was firing shots into her apartment where she was cooking food with her children. And at the time I did my original video, the body cam footage, which was being demanded to be released, was not out yet. And I said that I would go over it if the updates were actually interesting, and they definitely are. So we're going to talk about the body cam footage, give you some refreshers on how she was treated by the crowd, and you guys will see for yourself that Black Lives Matter will defend absolutely anybody and make up stuff in order to do so, despite the fact that video evidence completely contradicts what we're looking at. However, today we have a sponsor, so I'm going to toss it over to the sponsor and then I'll come back and talk to you about the story on the other side. How many times have you seen something that you loved be updated into something woke, unfunny, uninteresting, and you just felt sour about it? How many times have you asked yourself, where is the good art? Where's the good stuff that's uncensored, unfiltered, totally independent of this woke garbage? Well, today I have the answer for you, my friends. And that, of course, is Flip City Magazine. Flip City Magazine is hilarious all the way through. This thing is like Mad Magazine before it went woke. And it holds no bars, it's 100% independent, and they're fully committed to free speech. The issue I'm holding right now has an amazing cover featuring Kyle Rittenhouse and a Count Dankula interview that's exclusive to the magazine. But the real reason I love Flip City, other than the amazing art, other than the effort that you could see on every single page, is the fact that they put comedy first. This thing is hilarious from front to back. And they're not afraid to go after people in the conservative movement that need a little bit of making fun of check out this section on conservative ink when's the last time you saw anybody on the right wing side take some shots at their own side that is proof positive of their commitment to comedy that you could see on every single page of this magazine so do yourself a favor go over to flipcitymag.com and get yourself a subscription or you could check out the pin link top of the comments of this video or the top of the description box and get it there it's amazing you'll be laughing all the way through it that's flipcitymag.com Now that was the scene, of course, on the day of the protest, where protesters were blocking this woman from entering her own house and scrolling out the name of the person who tried to kill her and her children 
on the front of the door, and then things went crazy when she actually confronted them about the nonsense that they were putting forward. You can hear people in the crowd talking about how she needs to shut up, downplaying what she's going through by saying, oh, she's having a little bit of a moment. People coming up, threatening her, getting in her face, telling her to get her ass out of here, even though she's one of the people that actually lives here. All manner of nastiness and disgusting behavior from the Black Lives Matter side based on the fact that they bought into a false narrative related to this story. And of course, we have devastating quotes from her. I'm going to play them again for you. You, you asked on your social media, you said if you died, would we hear? Would we no, you wouldn't. Not like this. No, the fuck you wanted us. No, you wouldn't because you wouldn't even know the story. You wouldn't even know the story. It's just powerful stuff all the way around, and we almost never hear from the victims of the criminals that end up being killed by the police, that end up being put up as these heroes by Black Lives Matter, the people that we see their baby pictures of, so that we're meant to be tricked into thinking that this person in this photo that was taken years ago is a little baby, so somehow the man that we're talking about now that's victimizing other people can't be responsible, or whatever nonsense people are trying to put forward that indication, and she is having none of it, and again, that thing that that she said about now my kids have to watch you try to celebrate the man who tried to kill him. But all I know is for three years I lived here and none of you guys knocked on that man's door to see if he was okay. Not at all. He played loud music every day to cope with his mindset. There's bullet, there was casings in the hallway. The shot went through my door to the pillar to the kitchen. I was cooking food for my kids. He said it all. Mic drop moment, camera pans away, all amazing stuff. Now, now, with that being said, we have to understand that there is another side to this. There is a grieving family. There are people who mourn the loss of the person. There may or may not be mental issues at play for this situation, although Arabella has a great response to that, which is these people should have helped this person when he was alive. Guys, did not take on that man. He sat in that apartment. Can I please speak? Why did they care when he was here? He could have got the proper help he needed. But for the most part, I'm not one of those people who wants to attack members of the family who are grieving. However, I do need to point out that they are fueling a lot of the hatred and vitriol toward this woman in this moment with the many press interviews that they did. For example, this one that I recently caught wind of, where she says the reason that Tekel was killed was due to the fact that he was black, and if he were white, he would have been taken easily. No problem, no questions asked. It's insane. It's obviously indicative of racism she's basically making the case that you see in those embarrassingly simplistic facebook memes mark and cindy adopted tekle from ethiopia when he was four he was raised alongside eight siblings the sunbergs say they believe if it were one of their biological children having a mental health crisis the outcome would be different everyone knows had it been a white person in that building they would have talked him out they would have waited people who go in and shoot massive amounts of people are arrested safely and alive if they're white. If they're not white, we know the outcome. They're dead. They're dead. It's all about color. It's all about the lack of value of the humanity of a black body. And it's wrong. And it has to stop. We have to name it. It has to stop. Now, in reality, the police in this situation negotiated with Tekle for hours. You can hear them on the megaphone. There's actually a two-hour live stream, two hours plus live stream that was posted on the Citizen app 
where you can see the negotiation go on, you can actually see that the thing that ended up setting off the shooting was the fact that Tech Lay started breaking out the windows and was moving towards them with a gun, thus making the sniper have to take the shot in that moment because he was presenting himself as a threat to other people. But the whole entire time, they were trying to talk this person down. But this idea that he was just so innocent or nothing was done wrong in this situation, except for the fact that he was black, is absurd. We have the body cam footage of what it was like to be in this situation, and I want to play some of that for you so you can understand where Arabella was coming from and how hectic the situation was and how the police definitely showed restraint based on the behavior that we were seeing from this individual. Police! Police! Police department! So you can hear the shots being fired as the police are in the hallway, and obviously you know that this is a tense situation and the police are there, they know he has a gun, and he's firing while the police are present. But it actually gets even worse, because when the door pops open, you see the mother at the center of this story trying to get out with her hands up, and you can just hear the terror in her voice as more and more shots are fired. Now, it's important to note that this woman is the target of this man's ire. They've had issues in the past, and now he's firing into her apartment while her kids are there. So she is actually going to the door to check if she can get out so she can double back and get her kids out. And when she sees the police there, who she wasn't expecting to be in the actual staircase, and they try to remove her and get in front of her and get her in the staircase, you can hear the panic in her voice at the idea that her checking to see the coast is clear might have actually left her kids alone in the apartment in that situation and she's communicating that to the police officers now i know a lot of you out there in my audience are already parents or people who are looking to become parents or just generally don't need to have a lived experience personal connection in order to sympathize or empathize with somebody but just imagine you are in this situation imagine the terror coming from your voice as you don't know whether or not your little kids might accidentally walk out into the gunfire as this man is firing shots into your door when all you try to do was check if the coast is clear and then the police yanked you basically behind the line you're asking these cops you're basically begging them in order to get your kids to safety but in reality it might not be strategically advantageous for them to get out into the hallway since this guy is firing off rounds and is clearly currently still presenting himself as a danger to the officers and to the kids so you're in a situation where you're separated from your children it's a life or death kind of thing and then you go to your own apartment and you see people trying to celebrate the man that put you and your children through that. On top of that, these people are threatening you. They're getting aggressive with you. They're telling you to shut up. And one of them walks up to you, gets in your face, and tries to tell you to get your ass back in your car and get out of here. Because essentially they're saying, you don't belong here. This is all about the man who tried to victimize you. Going through a moment. This is not okay. This is what they want. 
to show on the TV. Hold on, find out. On the right or left? It's amazing to me that people can have this level of composure in these kind of crazy situations. When you see the video of what she went through, then compare it to the proportionality of her reaction to a bunch of people celebrating and lying about the person who put her through that, you can say, oh wow, she was yelling initially, but again, if you compare and contrast it, you realize that her yelling and her anger and what she said to these people was totally contained and honestly well understated for the situation at hand. And if I was in that situation, I would be way more angry that these people are marching up to me, threatening me, talking down to me when they have no idea what was going on. I mean, this video clip actually only gives us an outside perspective of what happened in that situation, not what was going on in her mind, not what was going on in her children's mind, but just this amount compared to that amount of anger, you realize that she was not nearly angry enough at the mob of people that were out there. On top of that, we talked about how the parents were actually pretty decent in their interactions with her, but in reality, the parents are no strangers to lying about what went down in this situation. The father, in the same interview when the adopted mother said, oh, well, guess what? This wouldn't have happened if he was white. This was totally a black and white thing, must be evil white racism, said in that same interview that he wasn't even given an opportunity to talk to his son. But in reality, the live video tells the opposite. I asked every police officer that approached me if I could go talk to him. No, absolutely not. Not only do we have a clip of him on the megaphone talking to his son, the megaphone that the police were using earlier, but there's actually earlier clips in this very same stream of them saying, answer the call from your dad, answer the video message from your dad, listen to the video message. They were trying their very best to get him in communication with Tecle because they wanted to resolve this situation peacefully. It only became a deadly encounter once this guy started smashing out the windows and was ready to point the guns at people and start fighting firing on the people below. Look, I understand grief. I understand anger in these situations. I understand that even if somebody you love did something bad, chances are you still love them. You still care about them and you want to support them. And obviously it's going to break your heart when they're killed in this way. But what I can't understand and what can't be justified is lying. He was given the opportunity to talk to his kid. Maybe the police didn't escort him up into the line of fire to a person that he described as mentally unstable with a gun firing shots because they didn't want to put his life in danger. Maybe if I give him the benefit of the doubt, that's what he meant. I asked every police officer that approached me if I could go talk to him. No, absolutely not. But the way it comes off in this video, it seems like they were saying, oh, they were not letting him have any communication with this kid. And hopefully, maybe that people would be outraged before they realized, no, they were actually asking him to help talk this guy down so we could get out of this situation. Look, we have seen cases in the past of police misconduct. We have seen cases in the past of the police failing, not following protocol, seeming to not care enough about the situation, not acting when we think they should have acted, or maybe acting too soon, presuming too much. 
much and thus leading to disastrous results. But this is not one of them. This is a case of a woman calling because she was in danger. The police doing everything they could to get her and her kids out of danger. And then a six hour standoff where they tried talking to this man, tried getting him down. And only when he started smashing out the windows to pop out of the window to start firing on people, did the police act and use deadly force. This was only due to the fact that deadly force, that level of threat was presented against them. And the body cam footage and the civilian footage in this situation shows beyond any shadow of a doubt that this was in fact a justified shooting. It also shows that grieving families, while they should be sympathized with, while they should be empathized with, they should to a certain extent be taken with a grain of salt because in reality, their grief overwhelms them in a lot of these situations and sometimes the truth eludes them. The fact is there are many inconsistencies, many irrationalities in this scenario and I'm not saying this should open them up for attack, but you should understand always that these are not unbiased sources because when you don't understand that, when you pretend like what they're saying is gospel you end up like these dopey activists that were standing around outside of this apartment being confronted by the victim that you didn't even know about but hey those are just my thoughts so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like the video show by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description box of this video this has been me talking about the body cam footage till next time